of my granddaughters for a few days, and I immediately thought about trafficking, that is, if you see something, say something, that we're living in a time unlike we've ever seen before. And I, I come back always to that mantra by Stacy. When the question is, what do you do? Action, action, in spite of the distractions. That the distractions that we're going through right now, that it takes everything in you to focus your mind. It takes everything in you to pour yourself and your energy and your mind and your thoughts in creating the kind of life that you desire for yourself and for your family in spite of, in spite of. And, and, and there, as you, I, I want you to think about the goals that you set out for yourself that you want to achieve this year and I'm encouraging you to get a three-by-five card. And, and the purpose of this is to keep your mind focused on your agenda. Right on one side, I give thanks. And whatever that is that you want, mine is to be off all my medication, to be cancer-free, and, and, and to, to build a legacy for my children and my children's children. And, and to make global impact and touch more lives, train more speakers and trainers and life coaches. Put on that card, I give thanks. But not just I give thanks, but have a, a conviction within yourself and your mindset that it is done before Jesus performed any miracles. He always gave thanks before the miracle was performed. And when you, whatever that is, when you can step into the feeling and the emotion as you hold the vision that that which you desire, that which you hunger for is done, and you start moving in the direction, it creates an acceleration of movement. Doors open you did not see. Things happen for you. Magical things happen that, that literally will amaze you. The scripture comes alive. All things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And, and as you look at your goals and look at yourself, that keeping the main thing the main thing and setting yourself up to win. Look at your environment. Your environment is very important. You have to, to declutter your environment. You have to look at what is it you need to let go of. What are the things that you need to keep that have some value for you? What are the, the skills, the choices, the behavior, the people that help you to get closer to what it is you want to create for yourself? And what are those people and those things and the behaviors and the choices that's a liability that will work against you and that you need to let those go? But this is a time that you have to be mindful you don't want to operate on automatic. You have to watch yourself. You have to pay attention to what you're doing and identify and break down into incremental steps things that will move you toward the goal that you want to achieve. I'm reading a book now entitled From Warrior to Warrior. Going from worrying about stuff to being a warrior, that if you want to make it your greatest decade ever, I I I see this for you the that this is a decade of plenty in 2020, a decade of plenty 
in 2020 that I, I realized that life is a fight. It's a fight for territory. It's difficult. It's hard. And all kind of stuff comes out at you, and, and you say, where, where did that come from? And so that, that during those moments that you begin to, to look at yourself and ask some key questions, what is it I need to do as I look at this new year? What behaviors that I need to leave in 2019 and not bring them over into 2020 because they would be a liability? Who are the people I need to spend less time with because we're not coming from the same place? We don't have anything in common anymore. This is time you, you don't want to have any flaky people in your life. The emotional vampires, the users, you, you don't have the luxury to, to bring them into your life because they compromise your power, those toxic relationships. And, and, and there are some people that you need to seek out who have some talents, some skills, some resources, some contacts that you can now be beneficial to each other. Trying to do it solo, that does not work in this kind of environment. You have to have people who will have your back and you will have their back, mutually beneficial relationships. And it's very important to create special moments in the area of paying attention to your relationships with your significant other and with your children. And the other thing that's major is making your health a priority. A lot of stress is taking people out right now. The people snapping right now. When the unemployment goes up 1%, 10,000 women are beaten and battered and children are abused. So as you look at yourself and look at your goals and look at your dreams, who should you turn to and who can turn to you and how can you cover each other and be there for each other? When I was going through this challenge with my granddaughter who had a full-term miscarriage. I thank all of you for your prayers. I felt them. We felt them. I thank you for your support. And, and it's, it's good when you're going through something to know that there are people who care and, and lift you up in prayer. That meant a lot to me. People I did not know. And it, it really helped us to weather this storm that we are still in. But it took the edge off knowing that people cared, that we weren't just in it by ourselves. And some people who had gone through that experience and shared with me Here's how you deal with this. And when you look at your health, as, as you make that a priority, because the stress in relationships, the stress of losing your job, the stress of working in an environment that's below your potential and there's uncertainty and, and you have no job security, the stress of, of bills that, that keep on coming and look like you just paid them yesterday, that gets to you. That gets to you. And we're living in a time, honest to God, it seems like time has picked up pace. It's faster. Things are happening faster now than ever before. And I know that just can't be me. Somebody else got to be feeling this other than me. And in the midst of this, having a ritual, a plan of action of how you take care of you. And that's one of the things that I had to learn the hard way because there will always be stuff. People are going to always have stuff to deal with. 
Dimples was right. If it ain't one thing, it's another. And and I found myself depleting myself and giving away too much energy. And I love what Ayala Von Tant said when she said, give to yourself until your cup runneth over and then give to others from the overflow. Give to yourself until your cup runneth over and then give to others from the overflow. And so now I'm creating a ritual for, for my yoga, for my walking, for going to the gym, for getting involved in swimming, to take care of me. Because all this stuff that's coming my way, I remember when I was on my back from cytokine and pain from cancer, that stuff got dealt with or it didn't get dealt with. you got to make yourself a priority. And you have to start making choices that really, really, that represent a higher level of thinking for you because this is a different time. And you have to look ahead. And as you look at yourself, look at your goals, focus on creating moments of peace. I have candles. I have incense. I have soft music. I read a variety of scriptures. I read the prophet, Vakahil Gibran. I read a variety of things. The Kabbalion, I read a variety of things. To be centered mentally and emotionally and spiritually. And I like watching comedies, things that make me laugh. I like to see things that have me all jacked up and and tense and, and scared out of my mind. I like to laugh and and enjoy things. When I went to see the, the movie Harriet, I loved that movie. I felt good when I saw that movie. And, and so I like to watch things that inspire me. I'm finding some great messages online. There's a young man named William Hollis, and, and he has this, this speech that he's given called I didn't come this far to come this far. It's bad. I'm a bad young brother. And I'm so glad that when I reached out to him, that he was familiar with my work and he talked about the impact that, that it had in his life. And, and so when we begin to look at now, with everything that's going on with the impeachment hearings, with everything that's going on, with young people and and violence and and kids not feeling safe in in school and and now they're going to school and they have drills of what if somebody comes in a school with a gun that that they just can't just focus on the learning a little boy said uh, yesterday this is it and and took out a gun and started shooting and somebody took him out young kid this kind of mindset because guns are too accessible and so with this violent culture and when and and i read this study years ago that in cultures where where violence american television entered these these cultures and, and they had low rates of of violence and killings and and the introduction of American television, violence in those countries that did not have television, it increased by 35%. We hear people say garbage in, garbage out. No, garbage in, garbage stays, and it shows up in behavior and attitude and the mindset, and it helps to create a culture. And so, one of the things that I think is very important is working to create peaceful relationships. Life, and I can tell you from my own experience, life will bring you 
enough drama and pain by itself. You don't have to help the process. You don't have to help process. It's going, it's, it's going to bring it to you. All you have to do is just keep on showing up. Just keep on breathing. It's going to bring you some drama. Victor Franco calls it unavoidable suffering. It's, it's going to come to you or someone that you care about. And it's going to hit you hard. All you have to do is just keep on living. I don't care if you're tired, speaking tongues, you cute, whatever, what's the never. It's coming for you. It's coming for all of us. And so being able to find peace in the midst of a storm and able to get still and, and go within And, if, and, and, and get to a place of gratitude. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. I used to wonder, Mama, why y'all say thank you, Lord, for waking me up in my right mind this morning? I know why now. I put something down, and I call my kids to help me find it. I was looking for my glasses, and they said, Daddy, you've got your glasses on. I was talking to my son, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to find my phone. What are you doing? Daddy, you're talking to me on your phone. I said, oh, my God, do you think I'm losing it? Wow. I, I, I don't know what what's happening. I, I, it's just amazing to me. Things looking at me, and I don't see them. That scares me. Whoa. And so... That says, slow down, take a deep breath, chill for a moment, get calm, listen to yourself, watch yourself, back up, chill out. And I tell you, it, it hasn't been easy. It's a different level of, of living and orientation. I'm, I'm accustomed to pushing myself and, and driving myself. But this is a new season. This is a new season to be thankful, a new season to be mindful, a new season to be grateful, a new season to think and to rethink your life. It's a new season to look around and thank God. Look behind and praise God. Look ahead and ask God to order your steps. It's a new season that's upon us that will bring out the next greatest version of ourselves. A, a time that we have to, to be vigilant. A time that we want to build strong relationships, deep relationships, and spend time with people that matter, that you know you can count on. And if you don't have those relationships, build them. Family is not determined by bloodline. No, family is determined by what's in your heart. What's in your heart. You have something special. Remind yourself of that. Even if you don't have two pennies to rub together, Remind yourself on that. Even if the relationship you thought you'd be in for the rest of your life and the person who you love and they don't love you anymore, you have something special. Remind yourself of that. When you're down on your luck and things don't look good, 
It didn't come to stay. It has come to pass. Remind yourself of that, that you're more than a conqueror. Yeah, you're more and more powerful than your circumstances and what you have gone through and what you are dealing with. Remind yourself of that. And understand and know. To say the truth will set you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And I say, remember, the truth will never set you free until you destroy the lie that you currently believe in that's holding you hostage. Then and only then will you be liberated and unleash your greatness. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. Well, I tell you one thing. You might not be in my bloodline, but you're my love line, Mr. Brown. Thank you <laughs> for that message. <laughs> and I, I know you're going to steal my yeah. line. So, yes, so I know you're going to use it, but I give you permission. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome, and thank you for reminding us about what's how, how really like, important. How do you like that quote? How do you like that quote? I love that quote because I'm stealing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm using it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's a strong quote. Until you, till you defeat that lie that you've been telling. That's powerful right there. The truth can't set you free until you defeat the lie you've been telling yourself about yeah. yourself. That, that right there could change someone's life if they heard that message tonight. So I, Mr. Brown was live because it's the transformation of our mind and the renewing of our mind that will help us graduate to that next best version of who we're becoming. And to get these words from you tonight, it's timely, lest you shared about loss, you shared about how to still put one foot in front of the other when life gets hard. You've been telling us these messages over and over again. And for such a time as this, it couldn't be more appropriate now because people are losing hope and they're losing the ability to cope. And you've given us some ways that we can learn how to do that and how to just stay focused on the blessing of waking up in our good mind because I sure enough, was looking for my phone yesterday and it was in my head. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, it's too early. It's too early, Jesus. It's too early. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my and I'm busting yes. and I'm carrying on. Where is this phone? I'm ready to turn on the alert on my Apple Watch. I'm like, where? And the thing was in my hand. <laughs> yes, I've done that. Looking for my glasses and have them on, you know. It's scary, girl. It's scary. But, but you know, the this period where we are, here's what I know. If you go into an operating room in the middle of a surgery that's being performed, it looks like a murder that's taking place. Mm. But... After a while, on the other side of those procedures, there's a healing that takes place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I do believe that sometimes you can get so caught up and so distracted by the darkness and the purveyors of evil and hatred that we forget many times that God is still in control. We forget many times. We're stronger than this. We've, we've gone through worse. We are the children of the ones who would not die. We've seen some stuff. You think about James Weldon Johnson, Stony the Road We Trod, Bitter the Chestening Rod, Felt in the Days When Hope Unborn Had Died, Yet with a Sudden Beat have not our weary feet come to the place by which our fathers sat. 
I talked to a friend of mine today who who just she she spent some time in, in, in federal prison and I said, What was that experience like? She said, Les, I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. That was nothing. I'm from Africa. That was nothing to me. I had time to think. I'm taking my life in another direction, but I'm from Africa. And she said that with a conviction that said, hey, I was not going to allow that to break my spirit. And, and, and what we have to do is realize that, that we have the power at the end of the day there's a presence and there's a power in us that is stronger than anything that we're facing. And we have to remind ourselves of that. I, I remember <laughs> when I went, you know, I, I, I'm overcoming claustrophobia. And I, I don't like a closed MRI. I, I, I don't like them at all. And they want to give me something when I go in to sedate me because they know I don't like it. And I said, no, I don't want to take anything that's going to mess with my mind. I got to know what's going on. And so I, I remember that the, the, the second time I went, because they had to postpone it because I just said, I can't do this. Now, they have some open MRIs, but at this time, we're talking about and, and this is like in 85 when I'd been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And, and so they brought me in a room, and, and the lady said, are you going to be all right? And I said, yes. So I said, can I hold a Bible in my hand? And they said, no, you can't hold anything in your hand. I said, okay. So they had me get up on the table, the little gown. And so I said to myself, I'm going to say the 23rd Psalm. So when they pushed me in and they closed the door, I had, I had my eyes closed. And they did not tell me that there would be a thumping sound. And they just told me to keep my eyes closed. And all of a sudden, I hear this thumping sound. And I, I see the top of the MRI. And I said, oh, God, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I couldn't even complete it. My heart was beating fast. They said, keep your hands. Keep your hands at your side, sir. Please, sir. And I said, yes, yes, yes. I said, breathe deeply, sir. I said, yes. And then they turned the lights out. And I heard the lady close another door when she went out to go into the other room and for them to start the machine. Something happened. I've never told this before. Something happened. They were distracted. I don't know what happened, what distracted them, but something happened. And they didn't come back to open that door for me, I think maybe about an hour and a half. That was a long time. But something happened that distracted them. I don't know what. And when I heard the door open, I felt relieved because I just kept saying, the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. And I can hear them talking. And they said, oh, my God, I know he's furious. He, he's probably going to report us and, 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 and ask that we be fired. I, I, I told Jerome not to, to be here distracting us in the control room talking. And so when they pulled me out, uh, they said, um, we, 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 we're so sorry, Mr. Brown. And they went to give an explanation. I raised my hand. I said, listen, 
I said, you don't, don't have to worry. I heard you talking. I'm not going to report what happened. I'm not. I told y'all that I was very frightened. I'm not going to report you. And so when they brought the wheelchair for me to sit in the wheelchair, I said, I'm not going to report you, but you're going to report me because I left y'all a little gifted there. <laughs> Bye-bye.